Howdy ho neighbors, Rado Goji here, and welcome to a special Squeeze the World Toys video. Um, today we are going to be doing another 10 Shots 10 Bots. Uh, I guess 10 Shots 10 Bots 2 recording Transformers while drunk. Boop boop boogaloo. That, that, that'll work. So for those of you who haven't seen uh, the previous 10 Shots 10 Bots or these basically related um, Shot Spots and Mavericks videos. Uh, basically, the uh, thing here is I am going to take a shot of liquor and I'm going to quickly review a Transformers toy chosen at random uh, from some eligible stuff. Now, it was, it's been pretty slim pickings for a while, but I have uh, picked up uh, quite a few bots since the last couple um, videos that I did. Uh, so I have a lot more than 10 to choose from here. The liquor that I'll be partaking in tonight, unfortunately, I don't have any um, Jim Beam Kentucky Fire, the official shot liquor of, of Squeeze the World. Um, I, um, I'm, I'm, I'm so prepared that uh, I completely blanked on going to the liquor store this past week, and considering that today is the day before St. Patrick's Day, and the liquor store was quite a bit out of the way from my sojourn home from work, uh, I just decided to screw it and go with what I have here. And what I have here is basically some rum. Uh, I, so I am going to be doing shots of rum, which I don't normally do. Uh, I normally have rum with Coke. I don't normally like rum straight up. Um, I mean, I like rum straight up sometimes, but not always. But uh, in any case, I do have uh, my, my old standby, the Kraken. Uh, dark spiced rum. Um, not exactly 10 shots worth in there, so when I run out of that, I do also have some... Gosling's Black Seal. Again, not a lot in there. And if I run out of that, I do have some Bacardi Superior, which I don't like nearly as much straight up. I'm not as big a fan of, of white rum as I am of dark rum. Uh, but that that's what I have. Uh, so I'm going to go with what I have here. Um, I am taking safety precautions here and there. Um, I will get some water if need be and uh, I will be waiting at least 10 minutes in between shots uh, to ensure that I don't die. Now you may have also noticed that Greg is not here. Um, the, during the first 10 shots, 10 bots, he was present to basically choose and hand me the toys at random. The plan was that he was going to be here, but unfortunately some stuff came up uh, and he ultimately was not able to make it. Um, but he is still here in spirit because uh, he will be communicating with me via phone. Uh, I'll be texting him. I, I've, I basically sent him uh, pictures of, of the spread of, of uh, Transformers toys that I have on the uh, table here. Pretty much all generation stuff, if I'm honest. Actually, there are a couple of other ones that I could have added on there, but uh, I think this will do for now. In any case, though, um, he, I basically tell him I take a shot. He's going to uh, basically choose one from the pictures, and I'm going to review that, that robot. So, uh, let's go ahead and take the first shot here and see how well this turns out. Pretty excited about this. I would be more excited if Greg was here, but, uh, and if I had proper shot liquor. Again, I don't really like shooting rum, but here it is, so. So, uh, here we go. Squeeze the world. <coughs> That's not that bad straight up. Gotta say. I've had, I've had rum straight up before, and uh, that's definitely the better of the um, straight up rum that I've ever had. Anyway, I think uh, Greg already texted me his first choice here. Oh, and he even circled it for me. Wonderful. He has circled. He has chosen for me the green guy on the on the left. Is how he how he put it. This is Generations War for Cybertron Siege Hound, uh, deluxe class hound. Um, yeah, uh, I know that I said that I wasn't going to be picking up any Siege figures. Uh, I was kind of done with it, but um, then I saw Siege had a lot of characters that I would have liked to have that weren't in, like, any other way that I could get them at, like, an affordable price. Uh, and Hound is just kind of one of those... I'm not a huge fan of Hound, like, as a character, but I do like his aesthetic. He's like a Jeep thing, and this is supposed to be more of a Cybertronian Jeep. I guess in the original, uh, the original detailing and whatnot, but uh, much like the past couple of um, videos I've done like this, 
Uh, a lot of these do have uh, repro labels from toyhacks.com on them, and, and Hound is one of those. So um, uh, I'll just say it straight up, some of these have toy, uh, toy Hacks repro labels, some of them don't. A uh, link will be in the description for toyhacks.com. Check them out, they're a great site, and uh, they have great stuff. Also, you, um, something that, that Toy Hacks um, made for this that isn't normally on the figure is this roof. As I'll probably get into when I do the regular review, there is a bit of a mis misassembly on this uh, that prevents it from transforming quite 100% right, but in all honesty, it's really not that big of a deal. It still fits together very well, and even with that there, I really, really like the um, the aesthetic of the alt mode. So let's go ahead and I'll try to just transform him real quick. Also, one of the things about Siege is that uh, they have this sort of gun system thing. There's a lot of guns, and these guns can like com like they can like stand alone. Like here's a gun, and here's a gun, and here's a a thing that he can hold that I dropped. Here it is. But you could actually like combine the guns together like this to make like a super gun. Like that. I think that's how it was in the, in the instructions. Like that. I usually like to kind of hook this drum thing on the outside of the uh, longer rifle and uh, have him hold it. Because Hound traditionally has a shoulder mounted cannon, so that's what I use this for. I'm just going to transform him real quick. Very interesting transformation, like these panels, like, actually come off. The, the, these entire, like, side panels are, like, the legs. It, it's a very, very creative transformation uh, from a lot of the figures I've seen. Probably one of my favorite transformations since, like, Scrounge. Okay, so here is Hound in his robot mode, Sans Weapons. I'll just go ahead and put the shoulder cannon on just to kind of complete the, uh, the Hound look, but that's what he looks like w without um, holding any weapons. I do like to give him uh, this uh, little gun with the like I said with that with a barrel thing on the uh, side there like this and this is what he would like I guess normally look like just with the stickers on there now this hood part uh, that toy hacks actually they, they, they 3d print the uh, some extra parts sometimes I was actually kind of uh, pleased to find out that this little part here was actually included uh, with the uh, with the set it was a little bit more expensive than most of the sticker sets are but he's got a little thing and this is can this can be used as a shield or like a riot shield like the uh, military guy, like the jeep with the shield and the gun, and it's pretty awesome. Uh, I do like this. Uh, I do like this quite a bit. So that's Hound. All right. So Siege Hound, great figure, great start here. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, partake in my second uh, shot of Kraken for the evening. I've already texted Greg, and I've let him know that I'm about to take shot number two. So I'm just waiting on his response as to uh, what figure I should do. Uh, just give me one moment to take the shot first, though. If anything, waiting for the text message will give me will give it some time for the uh, the shot to settle in maybe a bit. Uh, so uh, here we go. That is really good. I do like that. And it seems I have uh, obtained a response. He has circled spot number two, and I was kind of hoping that he would um, that he would uh, pick this one at the very least. So, bot number two uh, is going to be Power of the Primes Ripper Snapper. Uh, Ripper Snapper is a member of the Terrorcons. Uh, the Terrorcons are a combiner group um, that. Uh, was kind of a counter group to the Technobots and, and, and Computron. Um, and I was kind of on the fence, really, about getting the the, uh, the, the Terracons at first, because I wasn't a huge fan of, the, uh, fan of them at first, and I, I already kind of had a Decepticon combiner with the G2 Bruticus, but as I looked more into them, I've, I really kind of grew to like them, too. So I got a, uh, and I already, I also had the uh, the combining Dinobots as well. So I figure I may as well, because these are kind of made uh, as part of Power of the Primes to kind of counter the Dinobots. Um, but I, I do have a Computron, I do have an Abominus, basically. So that's pretty awesome. Now uh, the Terracons are all based off of uh, monsters of some kind, and Ripper Snapper here is a Land Shark, uh, obligatory Candy Graham reference. But he looks really, really neat. Uh, he's probably one of my favorite ones. I think he has like a, like his major major thing is that he has like a in inferiority complex, and he tries to destroy all life forms that he sees as inferior, which is basically everything but him. Then he's got like two guns on there, and uh, yeah, pretty uh, pretty awesome design. I, I like this quite a bit. He's got little claws and whatnot. So the transformation is exceedingly simple with this guy. 
Uh, all you really gotta do is, um, you know, it's kind of full up the legs. Basically, the tail turns into his robot legs, and then, like, the arms kind of just shift around a little bit, and then, like, the head is in there. One of the things I've noticed is that there's, like, with, with some of these, like, the way that the legs transform, there's, like, this little kind of peg that goes into a slot. Sometimes it can be a little tough to get them to line up, uh, but once they're uh, when they're lined up, per you know, they're, when they're lined up perfectly enough, um, you know, they hold solidly together. And here is Ripper Snapper in his robot mode, which, as I alluded to, really isn't too different from his uh, alt mode because of just kind of what he is. Uh, like I said, the, the tail basically just becomes his legs. Uh, the arms are the same, and then just the shark head part just kind of slides back and there's his head. So the robot the robot mode I don't think is as I guess inspired as his alt mode is. The, 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 the strength here is definitely in the alt mode but the, the robot mode is not too bad. And with him being a power of the primes figure he also does come with his own little prime armor. Uh, the Terracons actually have like different colored prime armors rather than like the, how the Dinobots are where they're all just kind of like black. Uh, this one um, for at least for, for Ripper Snapper comes with like a solid blue one. Um, but we've also got one that's like uh, one that's green, one that's black, one that's kind of a maroon, uh, you know, based on... We'll see the matching characters if they if they ever come up. I'm kind of hoping that we'll get to look at all of the Terracons today. Uh, I'm fairly sure that uh, this kind of thing does appeal to Greg, so I'm fairly sure that he'll, you know, he'll pick, pick them out. I, I may do, like, a bonus combining Abominus thing. I, I would say it would depend on if I actually review all of the Terracons, but I did say last time, in the last, well, the last... 10 shots, 10 bots, that I would only form Volcanicus if I got all the Dinobots. And I didn't get all the Dinobots, and I formed Volcanicus anyway. Also, uh, rum doesn't get me as nearly as drunk as bourbon does, so uh, who knows how uh, how drunk I'll turn out uh, when all is said and done. Alright, so here's shot three, still on the Kraken, which is nice. Apparently I haven't uh, wiped out the videos that were on the camera before, so after I do this review, I may just, like wipe the videos that are on the camera just to get some of that uh, get, get that nice uh, space back um, anyway here you go shot three <coughs> it does burn a little bit but that's just par for the course at this point Greg sent a photo kind of figured he would pick this one too at some point he's only gone and picked the last remaining Dinobot. basically um i have this rule that's been ongoing with these that i don't do toys that i've, I've already reviewed on uh either on regular in regular reviews or on previous shot bot related ventures here uh so basically considering that uh if if i recall correctly we talked about uh snarl and grimlock in shots bots and mavericks and then 10 shots uh, 10 shots 10 bots one uh, we did we did do slug and swoop so um sludge is the only one left so let's talk about sludge uh, Sludge is the uh, Brontosaurus, as you can see, or whatever they want to call it these days. I think they decided that Brontosaurus is a thing again. Uh, all I know is that this is based on a Brontosaurus, because in the 80s, the Brontosaurus, as we knew it, was still a Brontosaurus. And I'm not picky with dinosaurs, uh, so he's a Brontosaurus to me. Uh, he also comes with a prime armor, which I'm not really going to show here, and he does come with a little gun. But uh, he basically has the same sort of mold as Slag, Slug, Slag, Slug, whatever you want to call him. Slug. It's based Slug now. And now Sludge is in his robot mode. And, uh, yeah. I, I don't know if I mentioned it before, but I, I think Sludge is my favorite of the Dinobots. Um, uh, they're all good figures in, in, in my mind, but... Um, I don't know, I, I, for whatever reason, and not just the personality or anything, just kind of the aesthetic, uh, Sludge uh, just always kind of, I don't know, appealed to me, considering that, I mean, not necessarily considering that, that um, Sludge was probably the one, the Dinobot I paid the most for, uh, because Amazon, I, I got all of the Dinobots off Amazon, and like Grimlock, uh, Slug, and Swoop, uh, like, I did get at retail price because they were still available at Amazon. Like, Snarl and Sludge, not so much. I had to get... I mean, still got them through Amazon, but through, like, third-party vendors on Amazon. Sludge was almost $40 for a deluxe class. I don't know. But it's not necessarily the price point I paid to have Sludge that makes him my favorite. I mean, 
Yeah, the, I paid the most for you, so you're my favorite. No, um, I actually do like the aesthetic a lot more. Um, I don't know, I kind of like the little flappy wings that come out. I mean, these these kind of, like, fold up to make the, the, uh, the torso. And the head just kind of, like, neatly goes onto his back like that. But, uh, I, I don't know. I, I just wanted something about Sludge. Um, I mean, like, I think, I, I guess, Snarl or Grimlock would be, like, a second favorite. And of the five Dinobots, I think I mentioned Swoop is probably the weakest of them. But Sludge is, uh, in my opinion, probably my favorite. Even if he has a retool of Slug, I think that, um, I guess he kind of wears it better. But also, he has his gun, so here he is holding his gun. He is putting his gun up. Okay, next one. Okay, sorry for the, I mean, I know I've been jump cutting all over the place, but sorry for that specific jump cut. I went and cleared up the memory on the camera. I also made sure that I got a glass of water so I don't die, and I am ready to pair shot number four and then await further instructions from the Greg Beyond. I don't know if that sounded morbid or something like that. I think I have enough Kraken for maybe one more shot after this one, so at the very least we made it halfway through on the good stuff. I mean, Gosling is good too, so the really good stuff. I don't want to say Bacardi's bad either, because Greg gave me that as a birthday present. You know what I mean though. The better stuff. The preferable stuff. That's what that's gonna at least last us halfway through this video. So uh, here it goes. Shot number four. <coughs> Ugh. Man, he's quick. He is really quick at this. He's just like standing by on his phone. I can just picture him now, like, okay, when's the next one? When's the next one? I doubt that. He's just probably playing some like Dead by Daylight or something like that. He circled something that's not on the table. I honestly didn't think he was gonna do that because I, I, I like the stuff that's normally on my table. I have that kind of like down on the floor just so I have a place to, to put it. But yeah, uh, what he circled, I'll still I'll still show it on camera for you. But <laughs> it's the uh, the uh, the joint Gatai ga uh, Gao King, <laughs> which which I've done a review. I did a review on the the joint the joint Gatai ones I have. He circled Gao King. I think he's just picking him at random then. Okay, he has. He has picked from the one. Now, I did tell him that these that there's basically one of a pair that's considered to be the same figure, and this is what he this is what he circled was this this little jet right here. But the jet also comes with this tank. And the reason for that is because this is uh, Siege Skytread is the name that they used. I'm still kind of getting used to this because um, this is not a character I'm overly familiar with. The character's real name is Flywheels, uh, but he's called Skytread in this case because of copyright reasons. Sometimes Hasbro has to come up with different names uh, because they can't always copyright everything. I mean, seriously. Uh, I, can you keep... I mean, I'm fairly sure that they, they've got like a stranglehold on the, on the, the rights to the name Bumblebee, uh, but like, you know, how, how often can you really keep using the word jazz? Uh, as a character name, but yeah, this is this is Flywheels. Uh, that's his real name, um, but it's called Skytread for the figure. But I'm gonna call him Flywheels because that's his real name. Now, Flywheels is a Duocon. Um, there were a couple of Duocons uh, back in the uh, the late. This was like a thing that was in the late '80s. Uh, I don't think the Duocons were ever on uh, on TV or anything like that, as far as I can remember. Um, there were there were two of them. Okay, the other one, uh, I forget its name. I think it was Battle Trap or Road Trap, one of the two. I, th I think it was Battle Trap. And um, he was formed from a helicopter and a van. And they actually, in Power of the Primes, they had actually split him into two different figures that could combine together. Flywheels, however, uh, is actually a, a proper duocon. He is a jet, and he is a tank, and these two do not make Legends class figures on their own. They actually just combine into the deluxe class figure. I just kind of picked this up on a whim um, And I do know that there are uh, there are um, toy hacks available or repo repro labels from toy hacks available for uh, Flywheels, but I haven't gotten them yet. I do plan on getting them at some point in the future, but at the point I, at this point, I haven't also um, some of the detailing on the siege figures you see a little bit of like a battle scarring that's kind of a thing it was something that I was 
at first had kind of turned me off to the series. I'm like, I really don't want that sort of thing on there. But then I was like, well, if I do this, I can get an Ultra Magnus for only 50 bucks. So I did. I have an Ultra Magnus, which is good because it's the only Ultra Magnus I have. Ultra Magnus is one of my favorite characters, and I wasn't able to get, like, an affordable figure of his. Like, when I started getting these, like, you could get, like, the, like the, the masterpiece, and, you know, screw getting masterpieces, because masterpieces, they're gonna be, like, over $100. But even, like, the Combiner Wars, like, leader class Ultra Magnus was, like, like, freaking like, I don't know, 80 or 90? I'm not gonna pay that much for a leader class. Leader classes are normally, like, 50. And this one is a leader class as well, the Siege one, but I was able to get it for $50, because that's the retail price for leader class figures. Who would have thunk? I'm not a big fan of, uh, I, I have paid out to scalpers previously, but I don't make it, I don't make a habit of it, is where I'm going with this. And folks, you shouldn't have to put up with it either. Unless, like, you're, I mean, I've seen people who are desperate enough to try to, uh, you know, give into scalpers to get, like, a, a thing that they want that's, like, a limited edition or whatever. And it could be like the, uh, like the NES or SNES Classic Editions. I mean, I guess I would say those could be worth it, but... It's not like the the, uh, the PlayStation 1 classic, am I right? So, here's Flywheels uh, in his robot mode. Uh, looking pretty slick, pretty cool. Again, I, I, I'm just kind of, uh, I just kind of picked him up on a whim. Because I'm like, ah, I, could, uh, this is a duo -con. I guess I could get a Duocon. But then I remembered I had Titan's Return Sky Shadow, who's also technically a Duocon as far as Titan's Return is concerned. I think this looks better than Sky Shadow. And he's only, like, you know, a deluxe class, which is fine. It's fine. I like Flywheels a little more than Sky Shadow, but I'm not uh, the, the biggest, hugest, enormousest fan of it. But, you know, for picking him up on a whim for, like, I don't know, was it, like, 20 bucks? If that. Uh, I'm, I'm happy with that. And if you saw his tank mode, you'll know that he did come with a couple of guns that came off. There's, like, this one, and then there's the main tank cannon. He can hold both of these, but they also, you know, combine together to make one big gun. I don't really like the look of the big gun because it just looks like, you know... I am not really that, that, that huge of a fan of when you just take one gun, stuff it into the barrel of the other one, and just say, Look, it's a bigger gun now! I think it looks better when he wields both of these, but I, I, I have some Micromasters as well. Like, he's usually holding this sword thing. Also, I, didn't in I, I do have two sets of Micromasters. I didn't include them in the eligible stuff. Uh, much like with Prime Masters and uh, and Titan Masters and stuff like that, I didn't include the smaller things because I don't know. I don't know if I could really do uh, uh, an overly huge review on those unless you know I did like I did before with like the Titan Masters and the Prime Masters, the standalone ones. I just did like a whole big video on all the ones that I had. And that meant that the Titan Masters video ended up being like 40 minutes. Sorry about that. But yeah, Flywheels is pretty cool. Uh, not Again, not the best figure in my collection, I don't think. Not my favorite figure in my collection by a long shot. But I'm glad I got him. I don't get too many Decepticons, in all honesty. Uh, I, I think I may have mentioned before, I'm more of a good guy fan when, than a bad guy fan when it comes to any given franchise. I will, I will accept when bad guys are cool. Like, I'm a big fan of the Decepticon Triple Changers, and... I've kind of gotten to liking the Combaticons, well, I mean, I like the Combaticons as they are, and i kind of gotten to liking the Terracons recently, but, you know, well, it's, it's whatever. The, the bad guys have cool stuff, too. Why not? Anyway, time to get ready for shot number five, eh? It's the last of my Kraken. Let's just, just pour it in. In, on camera. Uh, not quite full, but I'll take it. Uh, special thanks to my brother and his fiance uh, for supplying the Kraken. Um, they gave this to me for Christmas. Uh, this is the same Kraken that helped me get really mad at Mega Man X2 this past New Year. Thanks to to my brother and his fiance for the lovely, lovely liquor. Big brother loves you a lot. And by big brother, I mean me, not necessarily anyone who might be watching you. All right, let's take this. I'm going to count it as shot five just so that I don't necessarily have to mix rums because they do have their own different tastes and I don't want to necessarily mix things up and make them taste bad by accident. And our orders are in. All right, Greg, what is shot number foot, bot number five? 
Shop by five, bought five. Oh, he picked a biggin! He picked a biggin for this one! Oh yeah! This guy has like uh, evaded like two of these so far, but I don't think I've shown off too many leader class figures while um, while under the influence of alcohol in any shape, shape, or form. I think the only one so far, no, I wouldn't say the only one so far, because one of them was Blaster. That was in sh uh, Ten Shots, Ten Bots One, and during Shot Spots and Mavericks, I did have Six Shot. But uh, yep, yeah, we've got this guy right here. This is Power of the Primes, leader class Rodimus Prime. Te well, okay, uh, it's like Evolution Rodimus Prime is the official name of it, because not only is this a Rodimus Prime figure, but it's also a Hot Rod figure that can basically turn into Rodimus Prime. And this is one of the only times I've really seen, like, a Rodimus figure fully realized in his Winnebago form. So it's kind of like how how Optimus has his, like, you know, his main cab, and that's him, and then, like, the, the trailer. That can turn into a base or something like that, although the base is never seen in the cartoon or whatever. Um, although, oddly enough, Rodimus actually just kind of just transformed from this into his robot mode, because Hot Rod was the car, and then Rodimus was the car with the trailer. I don't know. But um, the, the, the toy has always been, even with the Rodimus toys, has always been the car turning into Rodimus and then this turning into a base. But the way that this works out is that the car turns into Hot Rod and then the tra trailer can attach as armor to make him into Rodimus, which is pretty awesome. Also, Toy Hacks stickers on here. I haven't really been pointing out which ones had the Toy Hacks treatment. I think all of them up to this point have had, except for Flywheels. And I, I know that I, I, I sp uh, explicitly said that Hound did, but uh, Ripper Snapper did, and Sludge did as well. Flywheels did not, Rodimus does. What Nintendo don't. I'm sorry, I didn't really mean to go into a whole different reference. Anyway, let's let's disconnect now. Uh, oh, actually, I do, I do want to savor uh, the fact that this is as well put together. Let me just kind of realign that a bit. Is This is as well attached as it is because um, somehow, uh, the stars were able to align just right and allow me to attach the car to the trailer properly. Uh, this is not something that I can normally make happen. Um, there's, like, tabs that go into some slots, and then these kind of got to get into place just right for it to hold together in the trailer mode properly. And when it, and when it, does, it, when it does come together properly, it looks really neat. Uh, I do like the look of this trailer mode. Um, it's just a pain in the ass sometimes to get this where it needs to go. Because, um, I mean, even even so, even with, with the stars aligned properly, it probably took me a good 10 minutes to put this guy together uh, the way that it is. So let's go ahead and swap him over. I'm actually going to show off... Um, actually, let's, let's disconnect, disconnect Hot Rod from the trailer real quick. So these come up, and then like the sides kind of come out, and then like these panels will break away, and then just pop them off like this. And here's our little hot rod figure. Just take the uh, side panels. Now we've talked about hot rod before on the channel. Um, I did show off the Titans Return hot rod, which was just a standalone hot rod with a with a headmaster attached to it. But this is um, at least from what I've seen, a little more akin to like the original Hot Rod figure, and and this does turn into like a, a legitimate good Hot Rod figure in my opinion. This is uh, obviously a familiar sight, the Hot Hot Rod in his uh, muscle car mode, although the uh, the pipes are a little bit more straight and not you know kind of angled a little bit um, like the Titan Return figure was, but. I'm not going to complain. I mean, as neat as the Hot Rod figure is, uh, he's not the main centerpiece here. I mean, obviously, this thing is meant to eventually turn into Rodimus Prime, and that's where your attention to detail goes. If I did have one complaint about this, is how the uh, the back is kind of fit together. There's like these two sets of tabs. I'll get, I'll get more into this when I if I uh, you never know, get around to doing a proper review on this, but I feel like sometimes I might break the tabs off when forming the car mode because of how everything slots in but uh i've been pretty lucky so far so i'm not gonna i'm not gonna look a gift horse in the mouth i wish the neighbor's dog would stop barking i've always been like under the impression that um i mean i remember when we started i mean i i wasn't really collecting the figures at the time but like i'd started seeing like 
articles and whatnot about, like, one-step Transformers. I'm like, what's even the point at that point? But I, I can appreciate if something is a little bit more simple and doesn't necessarily go the super complicated route. I, I don't have any Masterpiece figures, and my wallet thanks me for that. But um, I honestly don't know if I'd want them, because I can... I can get something that's good enough at a good price with these, uh, you know, standard, like, Generations figures, and they're, they're the characters I like, they're the characters I really like, and, you know, especially with Hot Rod here. You know, I know I'm a bit of an odd duck when it comes to stuff like this, but I'm more of a fan of, like, season, like, the movie in Season 3. I mean, don't get me wrong, I like me, you know, Season 1, Season 2 stuff, I like the Dinobots, uh... Some of my favorite characters include Wheeljack and and Soundwave. For whatever reason, when I I, I, I watched through the G1 cartoon on Netflix, you know, so, you know, a few years back, and that's where I've gotten most of my knowledge for this stuff. Because I used to rent the videos when I was little, little, but I barely remember, you know, from what I had seen from that. But when it got to season three, and it was, you know, Rodimus and. Ultra Magnus and RC and Springer, you know, those were the characters that I kind of more or less gelled with. Plus, Season 3 gave us Computron, my favorite combiner, so I can't really complain. Here's Hot Rod. Man, pretty solid Hot Rod figure. I can't complain with this. Even with his simplistic transformation and everything, he has a great range of articulation. And he's even got his little guns. They were on the back of the Winnebago earlier. Like, he's always known... As, as far as I've seen for, like, having, like, dual guns. Who guys dual guns? Ain't that something? I like this figure... You know, I like this figure as it is. Pretty good stuff here. But, the main attraction is still to come, ladies and gents. So this whole assembly will make, like, additional body and armor and arms and whatnot for, a, like, a Rodimus Prime mode, which is pretty awesome, too. Uh, in all honesty, if I had gotten this first, I probably wouldn't have gotten the Titans Return, uh, the Titans Return Hot Rod. Because I'm like, yeah, they got a, you know, a Hot Rod that turns into Rodimus Prime. I mean, right now, I kind of, like, make up for the fact that I have two of them by keeping the, uh, the Titans Return Hot Rod up at, on my desk at work. And he looks awesome standing there, but, uh, you know, at home, I got my Rodimus Prime. Also, they're kind of the same thing with Grimlock. I mean, I still have my... My Henke Grimlock up on my windowsill back there, and I, uh, I have my Titan's Return Grimlock, the Clobber or whatever, he's on my desk at work, but, you know, but then again, I'm, then again the uh, Power of the Primes one is kind of perpetually transformed as Volcanicus right now. I mean, he's kind of, Volcanicus is kind of sitting there with one less leg because I had to get Sludge out of there to get him, um ready for uh for potentially being picked in the video which he was so good on him also a nice touch here we've got a little matrix of leadership and that's something even uh from there the little crystal comes out of the uh a little holder it's meant to be swappable with like prime masters uh, i don't have a prime master you know i mean they're they're kind of over there right now on their makeshift shelf makeshift shelf I think I might be being affected by at this point. Um, but if I had a Prime Master handy, you know, I could put him in the little little holder there. Uh, or if you have, like, uh, an Enigma of Combination handy, you can put that in there as well. But uh, holds this by default. And, and this can be used pretty much, like, anywhere a, um, like, a Prime Master would go. And even Titan Masters. Like, they're, they're uh, compatible with Titan Masters as well, so I could like do like an Inception thing if I if I had my uh, my Titan Return Hot Rod handy, I could like put like the the Titan the Titan Return Hot Rod head in here, and then just kind of put it in this little cavity in the armor where the uh, the Matrix normally sits. Um, but still, like like top marks, I think I would say top marks for uh, for including a. Uh, a matrix of leadership there. I know that Optim the uh, Evolution Optimus Prime has one too. I'm just not as big of a fan of Optimus Prime. I blasphemous, I know. I'm sorry. Oh god, now I have to remember how to- Because Hot Rod kind of fits into this. I have to remember how to transform Hot Rod. Uh, it's been a while. It's been a little bit of a while. Uh, but they also made like a redeco of, um, of, uh, of the Rodimus Prime. Uh, based off of, uh, they called him Rodimus Unicronus, uh, I guess to kind of play around with the idea that, like, you know, 
Unicron is basically the opposite of Primus. It's basically shattered glass, Rodimus Prime. And, um, you know, I know a lot of people who are really looking forward to that. You know, good on you for getting that. I mean, I just... Shattered Glass is, uh, it's kind of a, um... I probably should read it at some point. It's a, it's a comic book, but, uh... I, I've kind of been interested in, um... In Shattered Glass on the... On the concept of, um... I, I like alternate history or alternate continuity sort of, uh, sort of stories. And just to see, because I've, I've read a lot of stuff on, on Shattered Glass. I mean, I haven't read Shattered Glass itself. I've read, like, stuff pertaining to Shattered Glass one moment while I plug the camera in. But yeah, I've read a lot of stuff about some of the, um, like, the character profiles and whatnot as far as um, Shattered Glass is concerned. It's very interesting to me. As it is, I've been interested in getting into the IDW comics. I know that their most recent run or phase or whatever you want to call it just ended. Um, but they have, like, omnibus collections uh, for, you know, the stuff that they've had so far uh, that are still coming out, as far as I know. That wasn't the alcohol breaking the toy. That was the fact that I forgot how to combine the toy. I mean... It's not a, it's not an unfixable thing. It's just like, oh no, a little joint came out of place that's easily fixed. Greg is asking me if I'm okay. All right, I just I I, I guess um, he he uh, he got worried that there were no um, that there was there was no call for a shot six. Uh, so I assured him that uh, it's just a bit more of a complicated one. I've been at this for a little bit now. All right, at long last, Rodimus Prime. It's worth it, though. This um, this is pretty awesome. And if you really want to, you can you can hold the two guns like he does before. Or it's another one of those deals where the guns plug in like this, and it makes a bigger gun. But with the way that the guns are shaped, I'd be more willing to, you know, accept this. You know, as a bigger gun that that the, uh, the leader of the Autobots in, in Season 3 would have. So, yeah, Rodimus Prime, pretty awesome. Uh, glad I got him. I, I think I was kind of on the fence of him at first, because I'm like, I already have Hot Rod, but I don't have Rodimus Prime, per se. And I ended up getting a Hot Rod figure as a bonus as well, so that all worked out for me. All right, so that's Rodimus. So I'm finally ready for shot six, and I will alert Greg to the fact that it's taken me, I don't know, nigh on 20 minutes to find out what I was doing wrong with Rodimus Prime. He circled Sludge again. Okay, Greg hath spoken uh, for shot number six, but I gotta actually take shot number six first. Oops. That's gotta be a thing that happens. That's gotta be, that's the whole point of this. So I'm into the Black Seal now. I spilled a little bit out. I don't think anyone will notice. I don't think anybody will care. It's my freaking table. I don't care. I'll probably care later. Anyway, I haven't I haven't had Black Seal straight up, so uh, hopefully this is as good as Kraken. I know it tastes a bit different, but, you know, salute. Not bad. I'd say a little bit smoother than Kraken, but not bad. I mean, I, I, I do prefer smooth over... Actually, I think straight up, I do like that bit more than Kraken. I mean, I like Kraken with, with um, you know, with Macola, with my Pepsi, with my Coke. And I do prefer Kraken with, with that Pepsi or Coke. As far as straight up goes, though, Black Seal, I think I probably like a little bit more than Kraken. That's actually a little bit smoother. I mean, I, I'm, I'm drinking all this warm. I don't normally keep rum in the fridge. That's usually where the bourbon goes. But I don't got bourbon. Um, but yeah, yeah, I actually, um, I haven't had that straight up before. Um, I liked it with Coke, it was a bit different, or Pepsi. It was a bit different than the Kraken and Pepsi. Um, but yeah, I, I like that. I like that a lot, that's really good. Anyway, uh, the next of the figures, figure number six, bot number six for shot number six, is gonna be, uh, Power of the Primes Deluxe Class Sinner Twin. Uh, this is another one of the Terror Cons, as you can tell by his beastly features. He is a two-headed uh, quadrupedal dragon thing. Um, I believe his... Yep, his mouths can open. If I can get that. There we go. He's got his mouths open now. Uh, these are on, like, separate um, sort of 
you know, the next are on their own hinges and stuff like that. Pretty cool, good stuff. Uh, Sinner Twin, um, if I remember correctly from the, uh, from the bios I read about the Predacons, he's very sadistic, um, when it comes to beating up his enemies and stuff. He's, uh, he's the sadistic boy. Um, and, uh, his figure here actually is a, an extensive retool of, uh, Snarl, the, uh, Stegosaurus. Um, it has, like, the same kind of, um, action transforming with his, uh, legs. Not that I've really shown that off, because I haven't shown the Dinobots or the Terracons off in great detail. Great, greatly detailed reviews. It's mainly been just in, you know, alcohol-induced reviews with these two, but, um... You know, not my favorite Terracon, I don't think. Depending on whether or not we look at the Terracon leader, that's that's one of the main things that kind of irks me about Sinner Twin is that, I mean, for those of you who, who know what I'm talking about and whatnot, I'm talking about Hunger. Uh, Hunger is very similar. Like, he's also a two-headed dragon thing. I mean, you you just have your your combiner team and you've already run out of ideas so you basically have two of the things being basically the same thing but uh, if if uh, Greg picks hunger at any point you'll you'll know what I mean I mean Sinner Twin is cool in and of himself but um, he's not my favorite he's probably in the uh, probably in the bottom two uh, out of five I would say but he's he's not bad he's just kind of there so let's let's, let's transform him real quick. Well, so I'm starting to feel the effects of the alcohol kick in now. One would say, Oh my, you've taken six shots to get that far. That's quite a lot. Well, the, uh, rum doesn't affect me as much as bourbon seems to. If I did, if I had gotten, like, Kentucky Fire, like, originally planned, I would be probably a, <laughs> a lot more far gone than I am now. I'm just trying to get this open. So here, here's Center Twin in his robot mode. Um... Again, same sort of uh, same sort of transformation as Snarl. Uh, I I talked about Snarl in uh, Shot the Bots of Maverick, so refer to yourself to that video. I don't remember how far it's in because even considering all the stuff that I edited out, uh, Shot Spots and Maverick was about like a four or five hour long video. So sorry, but um, that's what happens when you try to do this sort of thing and also play Mega Man X7 at the same time. So you got like the two, like the beast mode heads are on the back. Um, his main body mostly turns into the legs, and the front legs turn into the arms. And he's also got a gun. The gun was on his on on the back. I put the gun on his back in in, in uh, alt mode because there was a, a peg for it. But uh, he has a prime armor as well. But I'm not going to show that off because it's only really relevant if uh, if I have a prime master handy to you know equip on him, which I don't, or if I'm combining him into Abominus. Which I'll probably do later, anyway, just to show off Abominus, but... In all honesty, I don't even remember how well it combines, so... I don't know. I plan on doing... I, I mean, I plan on doing a lot of these reviews at some point in the future. I know I'm lacking off... Uh, being lax on a lot of my toy reviews lately, but we're just kind of in a... We're just kind of in a mood where we're just doing the Let's Plays and not so much the podcast or the toy reviews, but I will eventually get to, like, a whole Terracon video, um, showcasing all the Terracons in greater detail and combining them into Abominus, and, you know, it, it just depends on how, how I am at the end of all of this, if I decide to turn them into Abominus or not. So, who knows? Alright, I am informing Greg that I am ready for shot number seven, and if he is uh, as on the ball as he has been all night, he will text me his choice, or circle his choice, by the time I have taken this shot. So, um, here we go, this is shot number seven. Skull, Salud, Kampai, whatever you want to call it. I'm, I, I got Skull from, from Greg, I don't know what that, if that's, what, I don't care. That's a very, very good. Okay, uh, in this past jump cut, I have uh, made a stop to the men's room, and I can confirm that I am at least pleasantly plastered. And, oh, it looks like Greg has texted me in the meantime with his choice of bot to review. And for shot number seven, Greg has chosen Titan's Return Broadside. 
Um, this is kind of a... Uh, I don't know, I kind of just... <laughs> I kind of included Broadside here in a technicality. So, much like many... Uh, many people who bought this guy, I was kind of weirded out by one of his modes. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Broadside is a triple changer, which means that he has two alt modes uh, and one robot mode. And obviously, as you can see, one of his modes is his aircraft carrier here. But Broadside is mostly known for turning into an aircraft carrier and a jet. Uh, now, I, like most other people, thought that his uh, jet form looked horrible. I'm going to I'm going to put a po uh, picture of what Titan's Return uh, broadside looks like in jet mode here. So, like most people, I have kind of, sort of, physically modified broadside to have a better looking jet mode. But let's look at his airport. <sighs> His airport mode. Let's look at his aircraft carrier mode in the meantime. I was about to say airport mode, but then I st stopped myself because drunk. So this is his air, air, car air, aircraft carrier mode. Um, normally these fins are supposed to like fold in a little bit more to make more of a leg to stand on. I mean, it still stands fairly well with this, uh, but because of the way that I modified these fins. Um, they kind of like stick out a little bit more now, which is fine uh, if you don't pay too much attention to the bottom. Also, there's uh, there's um, repro labels on this as well. So it says uh, 86 here instead of I. Hold on, let me get, get a better better look at it. It says 86. I think it said like 63 or something like that before, but I'm fairly sure that in Gen 1 he was 86. Not that it matters too too much, but yeah. Um, and I kind of, um, when I incorporate his gun, his robot mode gun into the, uh, the aircraft carrier, kind of put it off to the side. It still looks a little out of place, but so does the bottom at this point, so who the hell cares? And, uh, here is his Titan Master blunderbuss. Now, unlike most of the Titan Masters, um, in, uh, Titan's Return, at least the ones that are, that are included with, um, the, uh, the Deluxe and Voyager and Leader classes, uh, Blunderbuss really isn't based on anyone, he's just kind of there. Uh, cause Broadside was not a Headmaster. Um, I mean, at the very least with some, some, some figures, or some characters like Hot Rod and Blur, uh, they weren't Headmasters either. But their, uh, their Titan Masters and Titans Return were based in some way, shape, or form off of the Target Masters that they had at the time. But Blunderbuss is very much like an original Titans Return creation. It's kind of like uh, Perceptor. We saw Perceptor with, with uh, Ten Shots, Ten Bots Part 1. And Perceptor has a uh, Titan Master called Convex, uh, who was not in any other kind of thing at the time. So Blunderbuss is basically kind of in the same boat. And the Voyager class Titans Return figures are all triple changers. Uh, so we have them um, all, I think like every triple changer with the exception of, with the exception of like, okay. I say with the exception of, but like most of the Autobot triple changers aren't, aren't uh, involved. Like there's no Springer and there's no um, Sandstorm. There's just Broadside. But as far as the Decepticons are concerned, with Titan's Return. They have an Astro Train, they have a Blitzwing, they have an Octane, so that's all their triple changers accounted for. In any case, yeah, Blunderbuss is the Titan Master. He's just kind of a Titan Master just to have a Titan Master. Because all the Voyager class figures had Titan Masters. Even the ones that actually were triple changers. So why not? They just came, kind of came up with a name and they're, they're Bob's your uncle. So I'm gonna take this off and um, one more thing before I transform Broadside at all, you'll may, you might notice these little planes here. Um, basically, uh, Broadside came with these little little planes that go on them. And the thing with the planes themselves is the little these little planes um, that are covered in way too much white paint. It's like caked on so much that like. They were like on a sprue or a runner or whatever you want to call them and I don't think those will pick up on camera but you can see like where it came off. Like they were like molded in like a different colored plastic and they were just like coated like 15 million times in white paint. 
Um, but these little planes are actually meant to be little aerial bots. And not even counting, like, Alpha Bravo. These are, like, meant to be, like, the OG aerial bots. I mean, like, I can tell, like, the big one's supposed to be uh, Silverbolt. And the other ones are kind of based off of, uh, you know, the other aerial bots from their Combiner Wars molds. Uh, so, you know, we've got a Slingshot, we've got an Air Raid, we've got a Firefight, we've got a whatever the other one was. I can't remember what the other one was. Dive Bomb. I think it was Dive Bomb? Was that one of the Insecticons, actually? No. I'm thinking of Bombshell. Fairly sure dive. I'm gonna look this up. Looking up stuff when I shouldn't be doing this because I should do all the stuff by now. Skydive! Skydive was the other one. And it's Fire Flight, not Fire Fight. I don't know. I don't know the aerial bots as much as, as like the, com the Combaticons or, com or the Techno bots. I don't know. I think I, you know, I put one of my aerial bots, these little aerial bots, the one that I was showing off on camera put him someplace and now I don't know where he went. That might be a problem. I hate losing little pieces like this. Crisis is averted, I found it. All right, so I have all the aerial bots off to the side so I can actually transform this, at the very least, into his, uh, his jet mode. And one thing that I've seen a lot of when it comes to Broadside in particular, uh, I see a lot of people like, it doesn't make sense. It does, it's very out of scale that he turns into a jet that's in in scale with other jets and he can also turn into an aircraft carrier that's in scale with other aircraft carriers but you know what you know what transformers can change size in g1 look at sound wave sound wave turns into a goram tape deck and he shrinks when he turns into a tape deck and no one freaking cares but broadside? No, no, don't give him any quarter. All right, my camera has just given me like a warning that it is once again at like 30 minutes left in recording time. And I don't know if I can take the time out to offload that because that'll take a while if I do. So I'm gonna try to go through this as as I can. Um, here is Broadside in his jet form, at least as far as like the modded form goes. Because I, I, you know, you've got to swap, swap these fins around so that they're actually facing the right way. And this is pretty much what his jet form is going to look like. Also, you know, toy hacks, repro labels, and whatnot. And um, the I, I did forget to show off. There's a, there's actually a place on the aircraft carrier where the where the Titan Master could sit that wasn't the tool gun turret, but you can actually f flip up this uh, cockpit here and you can fit him in. And there he is. He fits in. Close him up. And the aerial bots can fit on little pegs on the wings as well. I'm not going to do that here. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and transform him into robot mode just for the quickness. Here's Broadside in his robot mode. Apologies if the um, the repro label over the visor, if you can notice that that looks maybe kind of off. It's one of those visor ones that kind of has problems staying in place. And even, I mean, it seems to be holding in place now, but um, I actually had to try to reapply that because I got the, the, you know, the sticker fixer glue from, from Toy Hacks recently. And I've been using that if need be to uh, try to fix some of the stickers that they kind of started peeling off. That seemed to be a situation with um, with Broadside's uh, visor there, but at the very least, this is what he looks like in robot mode. Putting the wings down a little bit. There he goes. And he can hold that, that turret gun. The turret gun could also fit onto the jet mode in kind of a weird looking way, but this is what he looks like when he's holding that. There you go, that's Broadside. Kinda, kinda press for time now. Hopefully, I won't have to be put into a position where I have to purge the camera. I have a, a little, about 25 minutes left now, so hopefully I can get the rest done. Because I'm only on shot 8, Jesus Christ. So let's get shot 8 poured while I await um, Greg's uh, selection for the next bot. Can I, can I even finish this in 25 minutes? I've got three shots left. All right. Salud.
The next election has come fairly quickly. Greg has chosen... <laughs> he circled like three different ones! Oh no! So, he <laughs> it looked like he circled three different ones, one of which was Ripper Snapper, which we already did. Then he clarified it was the one to the left. So, the one for shot eight is gonna be Titan's Return Deluxe Class Blur! Oh man, I was... I've really been looking forward to talking about Blur because I love Blur! Oh my god, Blur is awesome. Okay, so one of the coolest things about Blur is that I mean, he was one of the main characters in, in the Transformers, the movie, and one of the main characters in Season 3, and um, he was voiced... I don't know if I mentioned this during the Punch Counterpunch review, um, but he was voiced by John Mashita Jr., who is better known as the Micro Machines guy. Now, for those of you who don't know about the Micro Machines uh, commercials in the late 80s, early 90s, he was the Micro Machines guy. He spoke really, really fast. He, like, mastered... He mastered the art of fast talking. I don't know if that's, like, like a thing that can be mastered, but he fucking did it. And he used that voice for Blur. Like, Blur's main thing is that he... He's like Sonic the Hedgehog, he gotta go fast. And um, that was like his major character trait, and I loved him for that. Uh, Blur is absolutely like one of the coolest characters uh, in Transformers, let alone season three. He also, uh, I, I, I mentioned uh, Punch Counterpunch, because he also voiced Punch Counterpunch, Punch or Counterpunch, they're the same character. You've seen the review. If you haven't seen the review, check out my Power of the Primes Punch Counterpunch review uh, because I go into a little bit more detail of that without being drunk. But he voiced that character without being super fast. But Blur was the Micro Machines guy! So Blur was one of those ones that was introduced like during season three time period, like 86, 87, when like Hasbro was like, I don't know, this vehicle mode looks like a doorstop. Let's just say that uh, it's a futuristic car. And thus, <laughs> Blur, <laughs> Blur came from that. RC came from that as well. And uh, they never made a figure of RC until like the 2010s. Like there's actually like a Titans Return RC who's like a re tool of blur. I really wish I had that RC figure, but I'm not willing to pay $80 for a fucking deluxe class. But considering that this blur is Titan's return, um, he does have a Titan's master with him. And I don't know if you've seen, but he's actually in the cockpit here because that's how the Titan masters work. They come with them. They can fit into the driver's seat. So here is the uh, Titan Master Hyperfire. <sighs> Give me one minute, moment while I figure out what Hyperfire's real name is. Okay, so the the uh, Target Master was named Haywire at the time, but because of uh, I guess copyright reasons, um, the Titan Master that's based off of Highwire is called Hyperfire. I hope that makes sense to you. But yeah, that's where the uh, the Titan Master name comes from. But yeah, this is uh, a pretty cool vehicle mode if you ask me. I mean, I know that a lot of people at a time like, this looks like a fucking wedge or doorstop or something, but I like this! I like Blur! I like this! It was, it was 80s retro futuristic car mode, and it works for me. <laughs> I don't know. I freaking love Blur. Uh, that's that's all I'm gonna get to. So let's let's uh, okay. Actually, before I get to the robot mode, there is a bit of a thing. So as you saw, I took Hyperfire or Haywire or whatever you want to call them out of the cockpit there. But there is a thing you can do with the front nose cone. This is actually like a, a detachable part that can be uh, you know like. Um, I, I refer you back to the first 10 shots and bots when we talked about uh, Highbrow and how his like little gun turrets could turn into a little 
kinda sorta, like little turret sidecar thing that Titan Masters and later on Prime Masters could use. If you can manipulate things <laughs> to the point where they stay together properly, you can actually take the front bit like this off and this can come the other way and there's like this little flippy bit little ski foot thing that comes out. This bit can can like have a little landing gear come out and you put a tight master in there and you can attach to the side like a sidecar if it'll fit if it's there we go I made it fit and then you can like attach to a side like a sidecar and it looks really dumb. Let's go ahead and make him into his robot form and make him look a lot better shall we? Okay so here's Blur in his uh, robot mode. And the um, the front, like, nose cone part can be a shield. It can attach to his back via these uh, these pegs here, or these slots, or tabs, or... They're tabs, tabs, tabs to slots, pegs to holes. Yeah, these slots back here, but um, he can also hold via a peg on his forearm, and he also has a gun, and of course, Titan Master Hyperfire or Haywire or whatever you want to call him forms his head. And uh, yeah, looking really good. I know that uh, Blur was a bit of a shelf warmer in his time. I, I guess people couldn't appreciate the, the, uh, the appeal of Blur, but I personally can. He's one of my favorite characters, and I'm super glad that I was able to get a... Uh, uh, a figure of him. I, I think it was even for like less than Legend class figures normally go. Deluxe class, I mean. It was less for than Deluxe class figures normally go. I think I picked up Blur on Amazon for like 15 bucks and you know despite what all the other other folks think this is a really good mold for him and uh, it's a good figure overall. I'm overtly happy with this purchase. Okay, sorry if this is at a slightly different angle, I had to reposition the camera a bit because in this past jump cut, I've had to purge the camera of whatever video footage it had and it took for freaking ever to do so. Uh, in the meantime, uh, probably about a half hour to an hour or so, um, I don't even know how long I just, you know, passed the time watching YouTube vidges. So, uh, special shouts out to the creators of the YouTube vidges that I watched. Uh, Chad Tronic, Gerard the Completionist, and Did You Know Gaming. I watched your videos while I waited for the system, the, uh, the camera, at, rather, to purge whatever video footage it had onto my computer. But on with the show. So Greg has pretty much given me the next, the last two shots in uh, in advance. And to be fully transparent with you, I have had taken two shots um, in the interim. I finished off the Goslings, and I have had a slightly overflowing shot of uh, Bacardi Superior. But I know what two bots are on the schedule for next. So I'm going to take, I guess, what's technically shot number nine. But for the evening is shot number 11. I'm still going to do this. I'm still going to keep with this. I need to keep my buzz. That's the point of this freaking video is to keep drunk once becoming drunk to uh, aid in this cause. So, yeah, I'm completely out of Gosling Black Seal. I'm basically on Bacor Bacardi Superior, which, in all honesty, isn't as bad as I first thought it was. Uh, the first time I had tried a straight-up shot of this uh, was during that um, Mystical Ninja Star and Goemon run. I still need to play another, like, a, like an actual, like, legitimate run of Mystical Ninja Star and Goemon. I had likened the um, the shot of straight up Bacardi Superior rum that I had taken as 
window cleaner. It's not as bad as that. I mean, it's certainly not as good as Kraken or Black Seal, but, uh, you know, for, for, for white rum, I'll take what I can get at this point, so. One moment while I take this shot. Salud. I realize this is going to take my current state and make it worse. Okay. So, when the last shot was chosen, Greg had incidentally chosen, like circled, three bots. The central of which I had already done. They said, like, do the left as the next one. And then I miss do the right as the, as the one after that. Which was uh, wa uh, War for Cybertron uh, Siege Cog, but then I, I asked him to clarify what was the what, which 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 ones was the next, because he had given me whatever ones in in in, um, in advance. So I'm going go I'm going to go with the next with whatever ones that he clarified. So I I know which one he had picked as as shot number ten, but then he clarified. The other one, he basically circled one and said, shot nine. Okay, so I'm going with that as shot nine. So that is going to be not, not, not uh, Siege Cog, but rather War for, War for Cybertron Siege Ultra Magnus, which in all honesty, I would have rather da done Ultra Magnus over Cog. So it all works out. But yes, we're looking at uh, War for Cybertron Siege Ultra Magnus, which is, in my opinion, uh, a hell of a good toy. This is awesome. I'm sure future me will have a field day with this footage. I see future myself like, oh yeah, this is hilarious. I'm gonna keep all this shit in. Okay. For the record, this is what Ultra Magnus looks like in his alt mode. I'm going to attempt, attempt, mind you, to transform him into his robot mode. One moment. So it should be pointed out at this point that there is a separate robot mode that can be taken from all of this, and that's the uh, uh, the truck cab from what I um, I pointed out as his alt mode. So just the cab from the truck can be counted as a robot mode, and I'm going to you know mostly off-camera attempt to transform this into his robot mode and then into the full alt mode as per the trailer. One moment. Okay, just so future Rado can have a field day with this, um, this is what normally exists for a base form of Ultra Magnus in his normal form. As far as I know, Ultra Magnus is normally a white redeco of Optimus Prime. And this is his, like, base form as far as Siege. War for Cybertron Siege exists. It's like this. And you don't know how much willpower I've had to drive up within myself to make sure that this is a proper representation of Optimus Prime without his armor and such. Because even in Gen 1, even in like you know, when it comes to Season 3 of Gen 1, I'm totally drunk right now. You know, G1 Ultimate Prime was kind of like this. Uh, and 
as far as War for Cybertron Siege goes, this, you know, is the original thing, and Optimus Prime is based off of this, but historically, Op Ultra Magnus is based off of, like, a white form of Optimus Prime with armor put on. Now, I'm not saying that there isn't, you know, armor to be put on this, you know, I am completely wasted and I'm trying to make heads and tails of an Ultra Magnus in regards to an Optimus Prime, but I'm fairly sure that there is an, there is an Optimus Prime that's based off of this that, you know, like further evolves in like, this like a galaxy? Optimus Prime that has further armor on this. Ultra Magnus came first on War for Cybertron Siege compared to Optimus Prime. And even this came with armor that has to be put on. I'm going to try my absolute damnedest to put on the armor to make this the Optimus Prime that we all know and love. So yeah, the, um, the kind of content that we know to be entertainable is going to be put into this Ultra Magnus. This is water, water for power. So let's see how well we can take this and turn it into proper uh, Ultra Magnus armor for Ultra Magnus. No, no, I need this to go forward. I need to put the head back in. I really honestly wish that Greg was here with me to keep me in check. Because some of this stuff needs to have other entities to keep making sure that it's still within continuity. I am bad at this. I am in way over my head. I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed of what I'm putting together. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Well, major jump cut here. Um, as you can see, it's daytime now. So, before we conclude this, uh, a bit of an explanation as to what's going on. I don't know how much of, uh, of Shot 9 I'm going to be leaving in, but I was absolutely trashed, as you could probably plainly tell. During the interim when I was uh, offloading video onto my computer, I was afraid that I was going to lose my buzz and then lose, you know, the magic of what we do here. Uh, and I had in, the inter in that interim taken two additional shots. So, while that was shot 9 for the video, it was technically shot 11 overall. And, um, yeah. Wasn't, uh, wasn't, wasn't great. I could not function, uh, and I had to stop, and, uh, I had to go to bed. Sleep it off, it's, it was at the point, I didn't even get out of bed until, like, after one so yeah oh boy now i was thinking i'm like uh, I, I this is kind of a failure now we're gonna lose some of the mat you're gonna lose a lot of the magic because i'm not gonna you know take freaking nine shots again there's no there's no possible way that i can make this work again now I, I was i was thinking like maybe i should just give it up and 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 not not finish the video and just not even edit it and put it up but i i don't want this self-harm, I guess, to go to waste here. So, while I won't be doing any more shots for the rest of the video, um, for obvious reasons, uh, I will be at the very least giving the conclusion um, to the whole thing. And it's it's a good thing too, because um, I, I do have a direction in which to go at the very least. The last two um, chosen toys, uh, Greg had actually given me in advance. I guess because he was going to bed or whatever, um, but uh, <laughs> due to the state I was in, I don't remember exactly how much I showed off of Ultra Magnus. I'm fairly sure I showed off the uh, the base, like, white-colored Optimus Prime form, but um, here he is fully armored up and actually looking like, you know, Ultra Magnus. 
Uh, and, you know, he's got the little bit of the battle scar detailing on there. He's got all of these little uh, posts and holes for guns to go into, because that's the point of, of the line. And he has a few guns himself, the little, uh, the little uh, missile launcher things on the side. Uh, count as weapons that you can, you know, plug on to other figures as well. He's got a gun that he can hold here, and he's also got two additional guns that he can also handhold, uh, which are currently equipped on the uh, on his legs. So that's a really cool figure. Uh, I'm glad I was able to pick him up for a good price. Uh, it seemed that uh, when I when I first was looking for him, you know, because Siege is still a, a new a new line a newer line. It's the current line that's out. Uh, when I um, initially was looking for him, he was like sold out on the normal Amazon stock, I guess you could say, and uh, he was already going for like 70 or 80 bucks, and then like Amazon got a restock and it was only 50, and I'm like, yeah, I'll pay 50 dollars because that's what leader class figures are supposed to retail for, is like 50 bucks. So uh, I'm more than happy with that. Also, I'm, I'm changed to a green shirt because it's, uh, it's St. Patrick's Day now, so uh, I'm like le le legally obligated. I mean, my name is Patrick, I'm of Irish descent, uh, and that's why I'm, I'm pretty much legally obligated to wear green. Uh, like everyone else should be doing, but, you know, barely anyone ever does this anymore. They just go and drink green beer. Anyway, um, I'm not going to be doing a shot, because, you know, I, I'm more than willing to still count this as ten shots. More than ten shots. I took two off camera. So, you know, I'm not going to be doing any more on camera. But I, I, but there, there were more than ten shots taken, so I, I'm willing to let that slide. But the uh, the shot, te the bot ten that was chosen by Greg is Titan's Return Blitzwing, another one that I've been really, really wanting to talk about and show off, you know, alongside Blur. So Blitzwing is one of the original Triple Changers. Um, he was one of the Decepticon ones, uh, and he showed up in like season two, I believe. Um, back when the only triple changers were him and Astro Train. Uh, and I, I would say that Blitzwing is probably my favorite of the, of the triple changers these days. I, I know that I've said that uh, Astro Train, like years ago I said Astro Train was like my, one of my favorite. I mean, he still is one of my favorite Transformers, but I think Blitzwing, as far as the triple changers go, Blitzwing and Springer, I guess for either side, uh, would be considered my favorites. Um, but uh, he has this uh, neat... Um, tank mode with a little bit of kibble in the back. Also, I got a sword there. He also has a, a second gun that can hold a Titan Master in there. You can kind of put it on the front like that. It looks really dumb, though, so I don't do that. And the Titan Master will sit in this little cockpit on the top of the turret. And much like with Broadside, uh, Blitzwing never had a, uh, a Headmaster or Target Master in the original lines or shows, so uh, they just kind of made up uh, a Titan Master for him named Hazard, so I don't really know like what kind of personality traits he would have or anything like that. He's just Hazard, and he turns into Blitzwing's head. So the tank mode, as we saw, was, was pretty neat, pretty cool, uh, and um, there is a jet mode that goes with this too. I mean, you can probably tell, you can see like the jet wings kind of folded up in the back. The back of the tank isn't as uh, isn't as convincing. I mean, the front of the tank has these little thrusters there too. I know that's left over from like the original toys design, uh, like the, G the original original G1 toy. I kind of look at it as kind of like having flamethrowers or something on the front, so it kind of brings the coolness factor back at the very least. But you can see like you know the wings and fins and whatnot on the uh, on the the jet. Hell, you can look at the back. You can see the cockpit there. But uh, let's we'll take a look at the uh, jet mode. Uh, uh, the jet mode proper. One of my favorite uh, silly episodes of, uh, of the G1 cartoon was when uh, Blitzwing decided that, um, you know, a as many Decepticons tend to do every now and again, uh, Blitzwing decided that he wanted to make his own uh, army and take over the world. And, um... Really ain't an army, per se. He just kind of took over a football team. That's, uh... That was the thing that happened on the show. Just kind of showing off the one of the last things you do is, you, um... When you take the nose cone out, there's also... That's also how you put the Titan Master into the cockpit. So there really isn't, like, a, a cockpit canopy that opens up. It's just like you have to split the entire thing open, but you can see him in there. And this is the jet mode. Uh, at least it says as close to the jet mode as I can remember. I'm fairly sure I did a few things wrong on there. 
Um, but, uh, but yeah, this is what the jet mode fairly sure mostly looks like. You can put the sword on the side, just kind of hook it into one of the visible fists there, uh, and you can also hook the other gun in like that. It looks a lot less awkward. There we go. Still looks kind of weird that a jet would like have like a place for a Titan Master set like that, but there you go. You can even see, you know, the tank turret's still on the bottom, but the tank turret also has like molded in landing gear to kind of help with it. Yeah, it looks kind of silly with like a lot of the tank kibble on the back, kind of like how the tank looked a little bit silly with a lot of the jet kibble on it. I think it adds to the charm though, so it doesn't really. I I I, I don't. I have no complaints about that. This is legitimately one of my favorite figures that I own, um, and I like the I like the look of it, especially with the um, the uh, the toy hacks labels on there. And here we have Blitzwing in his robot mode, or at least uh, the way I like to do his robot mode with the. Um, I think the instructions basically have it so that the uh, the tank turret is a uh, kind of folded down and out of the way like this. Um, but first off, that looks stupid. Uh, and second off, I flip it around like this because actually I think it was was it like that? I don't know. I flip it around like this because the, with the uh, the turret sticking up. That's how he looked in the uh, in the Gen 1 cartoon and with the original toy, so um, that's how I've always done it. That's how I'm going to continue doing it. Um, but yes, this is a very nice figure. Uh, I do like it. Some of the transformation bits uh, are a bit annoying at first. Uh, you really got to get used to uh, how the legs collapse and everything. Um, so thank God I uh, started with the alt modes with these. And uh, of course he can hold uh, the little gun we saw earlier, as well as his sword, uh, which is pretty much omnipresent um, with Blitzwing these days. He has a sword. Well, I mean, I think he always had a sword anyway. And it seems kind of weird that he turns into a jet and a, and a tank, both of which are known for having guns, and he has a sword. I'm not complaining or anything. But uh, there you go. That's Blitzwing, and that is our, uh, that is our tenth bot. We didn't get to see, like, three-fifths of the, um of the terror con, so I don't think I'm going to do anything with Abominus, but, uh, but yeah, uh, despite the fact that, uh, there was a big hitch in the middle there near the end, uh, I did have fun overall, um, and I don't know, maybe when we get to a point where I have more figures, I'll do another one, but, uh, until then, uh, I've been Raido Goji, and I'll be here next time. Join me, won't you?